Good morning, everyone. This man, Joshua Van Haften, was arrested at Chicago's O'Hare Airport on Wednesday for trying to join ISIS. And now a shocking new report revealing there have been hundreds of perimeter breaches at U.S. airports over the past decade. So are we doing enough to keep our airports safe? Joining us now is former commanding officer of LaGuardia and Kennedy Airports and president of CMAT Crisis and Emergency Management, Kenneth Honig. He is also the father of one of our producers here on Fox and Friends. Kenneth, great to finally meet you. I do a lot of work with your daughter, Samantha. Thank you. Um, so this this first uh, story I want to get to is the Van Haften at the Chicago O'Hare Airport. This was not a security breach. In fact, actually, security precautions worked in this case. Yeah, his name appeared on a list of people who the uh, TSA and the FBI are looking for. And when he entered the country, he was grabbed off the airplane as he was coming through customs. OK, uh, also hitting on this Associated Press report that just came out, it was startling to me that 186 airport breaches have happened happened um, since 2004, so just over the last decade. Did that number seem high to you? No, actually, it's the number of what they technically call breaches is probably even a little higher than that. Uh, the, a lot oh. of these are people who have gone out through a fire door to go to get a cigarette. There are people who get lost. And then there are the people who, uh, through a mental illness, have decided they want to get on an airplane and actually climb a fence or crash through a gate. Right. So some of these are not nefarious things. They're just somebody who was was nicking and needed a, a cigarette Ex break, went out an emergency exit exactly. or something and like that. Exactly. That. And that's the vast majority of them. And those people are generally caught within seconds because when they open one of those doors, loud, audible and flashing light alarms go off. But I wonder about the opposite, too. I mean, how many breaches happen that go unreported and what precautions are in place at airports to try to make sure people do report everything? Well, the airports are notified whenever something happens because these doors are all alarmed. It's required that they be alarmed and that an audible and that a visual alarm goes off on any of these doors. Uh, the airports are encouraged to self-report by the TSA because they give them a level of immunity for self-reporting uh, that they don't find them if if they're the ones who's told them. You know, it doesn't seem like we've heard of this many happening, but it, it, you can't really blame the airports. They don't want copycats, right? Exactly. And and one of the reasons, one of the questions in the AP report is, you know, why is this not the real reason for this and what are the details? And they question that. The reason is because is we don't want to give people a road map on how to breach an airport. A lot of the cases, the areas around the airport the way the person got in can't be fixed. Uh, it's a ge geography problem and things like that. Yeah, um, but there is a barbed wire fence that's that's required by the TSA at all airports, that, and that's a minimum standard for, for security, and it does go higher at some places. I want to get to this, though. Since it's National Pet Day, we've brought in your pet puppy. This is Parker. Tell me about Parker. Parker is actually my grand dog, and Parker is a... Um, Chihuahua and uh, Jack Russell Terrier mix. She is uh, my grand dog. She goes Aww. lives with my daughter Andrea, who lives in Washington State. Well, you State. can tell that that Andrea takes perfect, uh, fabulous care of Parker. Oh, yeah. Kenneth, thanks so much. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Appreciate it.